Hey, good morning, guys. Today, I wanted to spend a few minutes with you telling you what I've learned about different kinds of enclosures. Um, again, I'm no expert. I don't profess to be. I'm just going to share with you my experience to let you make your own decisions. In the last video, we talked about what I do with respect to raising baby garters. Now, after a couple of months, I typically move them out of the uh, tubs and put them into 20 gallon long uh, aquariums. And I want to show you a little bit about that. There's different styles of lids related to that. And I want to tell you, um, show you some details about what I've learned. All right, so I'm going to present this kind of in, the, in a good, better, best scenario. I think all of these are good. Uh, there's very specific features about these different kinds of lids that I think uh, make some better than others. So let me show you what I've, what I've learned. All right, so you see this here is a 20 gallon long, right? But what you're seeing is this style of lid. So it is a screen lid, which is nice. It's got locking mechanisms, okay, which are nice. Uh, the screen is small enough to keep babies in. However, there are a couple things here to know. So first of all, you'll see this foam uh, seal that I put in. Uh, basically what I did, was I put that seal, which is just a foam weather strip for a window on that edge, because believe it or not, baby garters can get through there. The other thing to know about this style lid is that there's a little bit of room left and right for these to slide. They don't fit perfectly. When they're to one side or the other, you can see that gap baby garters can absolutely positively get through that gap, okay? So be aware of that. So what I do is, first of all, make sure that if you have anything in the tank, like I do, that they can climb on, that it is to one side or the other. You'll see that the long branch on this, on this uh, little tree in here stretches to the left, and I slide the lid to the left to make sure this is completely closed. There's really no way for them to climb up anything and be able to reach this side. So I, my opinion is this is a good setup. Um, I would not say that this is the best. Uh, one nice little advantage here is that if you do have your aquariums on racks like this, like I have, right? One little cool trick that I came up with is um, you'll see that there's a little hole here, and that's so that you can put a little a lock of some sort on that, right? What you can do is turn that, and then I just take a wire hanger, and I make a loop. Let me put this on the white background. I make a little loop. And what I can do is, when this is open, um, I can put this on here, right? And then hook it up underneath underneath the um, shelf above like that and it holds it holds the lid open so that's kind of nice that's handy but the truth is uh, as handy as that is to me the the way that the lid fits is just not worth the risk so I'm going to show you what I believe are better solutions okay next I'd like to focus on this tank here Again, it's still a 20 gallon long, so all the dimensions are the same. But what's different is the lid style. So this is a little finer mesh on the screen. You'll see this is something you should be aware of. This is melted plastic. That means that there was something on top of this at some point. I bought this used uh, with, a, with a light and it got so hot that it melted the plastic. Be aware of that. Um, I've also seen examples where people that have lights on top of this uh, if they have it too close to these edges, this plastic frame uh, will melt and warp, so be aware of that, okay? But what you see here is that the locking mechanisms here are clips, right? So there's one, two. I like this. I think this is a, what you've heard me use the term baby-proof. This, in my opinion, is a baby-proof lid. There are no gaps. So long as you make sure that when you close this, 
that this lines up and is right. So if this isn't lined up here, top to bottom, you'll know that the lid isn't, lid isn't closed. If the clips don't snap when you slide in the when you slide in the um, lid, then you'll know it's not closed all the way, right? Uh, the only disadvantage that I see to this is sometimes, of course, you're using one hand because um, you know you've got water or something in that hand, so it's a little bit tricky. You just lift up one. Now that one's unclipped. Now I can go over here with one hand and unclip that, and then I can slide the lid out. Okay, I like this. I would say that compared to the other lid style, my opinion is this is better. Still not the best, but better, okay? So let's go to what I believe is the best option. All right, I don't have a lot of room to back up here. So this style is what I believe is the best option, okay? Especially for small garters, okay? Easy way to, to uh, pick this out are these little loops. Okay, that's, that's usually the giveaway. Sometimes if you buy these used, those will be missing. So uh, then what you're looking for are the little holes that these go into. These are little locks, basically. They slide down into little holes, pull those out. When those are in, you can't open this. Okay, so there's no way that a snake could push this open. All right, so with these out, now of course you can slide the lid. I like this. Again, very baby proof, very tight. Um, very easy to do one-handed. This is what, in terms of 20 gallon longs, or even 10, because they make this in different sizes, this style of lid, in my opinion, is the best option. But I would look for these, and I would look for, of course, a sliding lid like this, okay? All right, so that was three different styles of uh, 20 gallon longs that that I've tried. Um, another tip that I would share with you is you can tell that I've gone through uh, some trial and error, right? And uh, one of the things I did was I started looking for these aquariums online on Facebook Marketplace and on LetGo and also Craigslist. Um, I typically find th those style of tanks for somewhere in the 30 to $40 range. Sometimes you even get lucky and find one that's got a, a few bowls or maybe a, an under tank heater, that sort of thing. Uh, so sometimes you get some bonus equipment along the way too. Um, another style of tank that I wanna talk about are the Exoterra um, swing door style tanks. There's definitely some things to know about that, so let me show you what that looks like. All right, so this one here in the middle is uh, a good example. I don't remember exactly what size this is. I think it's 24 long. I think it's 18 wide and 14 deep or something like that. Okay, some, some things I really like and there's some things you need to know, okay? Now, things that I really like, these doors, of course. Everybody loves these doors because they swing open, okay? If you haven't seen that before, see if I can reach. I unlock it here and then these doors open right that's great i love that makes it really easy to put um, snakes in and out food in and out things like that um, <clears throat> it's also nice if you don't have much room above so if this were on some kind of shelving where it was difficult to because of the spacing here it might be difficult to get your your hand in through the top this is a really good option for that okay um, it's also got enough room here that you can have a, you know, a reasonable amount of substrate in there. And it's also pretty good that, you know, most snakes will stay in while you're, while you're working on cleaning and things like that. All right. What else should you know? Now the screen top is great. You can also take this top off. Um, basically you just twist these, there's four of them, and then that top comes right off. That's great. Okay. But. There is something you definitely want to know about these. In the back, let's see if I can get this. All right, back here, it's taped shut right now, but basically there's a slider here that covers up holes that are meant to take wires that would be on the inside, okay? They come up through and then run through holes here so that you can get your heaters plugged in and things like that. Okay, that's what it's for. 
If you have babies in here, I would say anything less than a yearling for sure, 100%. Close it so that those holes are not exposed, otherwise the snake can crawl out. And I tape them. There's just black electrical tape in here that's preventing this from sliding. So it's closed and taped shut, okay? That's really, really important. Um, another thing I wanna show you is a lot of times these come with this styrofoam background. Let me just lean that against the wall, okay? So what are we looking at here? It's just a piece of uh, blue tape there. But this is the styrofoam background. I like it, okay? But there's a couple things you definitely wanna know about this. Again, they've designed this in such a way that if you have wires inside, you can run the wires under the styrofoam. Oops. And then in the back, there are these kind of channels that the wires would run through, whether they're going top to bottom or bottom to bottom to top, right? There's a channel for the wires to go through. All right, so here's what you need to know. Even a yearling garter, even a yearling, even up to maybe close to two years in some species, your snakes will go, trust me, <laughs> don't ask me how I know. That's my famous line, right? Your snakes will go under this and behind this background. And that, my friends, is a major pain in the neck, okay? So what did I do? What do I do to fix that? If you choose to keep the styrofoam backing in, what I do is put it into place and then I jam uh, paper towels in here and it will take three or four paper towels just keep pushing it in i use a pair of scissors push it push it push it push it jam that thing closed again picture this being in the tank this is completely filled with paper towels and that way the snakes can't get in there um, that's i think is critical so so be aware of that if you've got small either babies or small species of garters you know get this thing tightened up um, this is my wife's tank. She has a little uh, little baby corn snake. Literally just yesterday, the corn snake was behind the, behind the background. That's why it's out right now. And that corn snake's about 20, probably 22 inches long, something like that. So I like this style, but again, for small garters, I would um, recommend making those adjustments. Uh, I really like this style of tank as well. In fact, this is one of my favorites. This one's all cleaned out. I'm, I'm going to set up... I'm gonna do a uh, bioactive setup here. I like this one, it's got sliding doors, okay? Really like that. It also has a screen top. The screen top fits much tighter in this. Really like this tank. Deep here for in terms of substrate and keeping the animals in while, you're, while you have the doors open and so forth. This is one of my favorites. It also has a drain. This one, unfortunately, I pushed too hard while I was setting it up and I cracked the glass. That's why there's um, tape in there, but really like this this is a 40 and uh, makes this is a really good size for adult garter snakes a couple of a couple two to three adult garters for most species would be comfortable in there okay so hopefully that helps all right guys so hopefully some of those tips um, help again not an expert just sharing with you the things that i've learned and trying to make some recommendations to help you maybe uh, not have the same headaches that i had trying to figure it out okay have fun with it that's the number one thing